I mean, Joshua chapter 2. In Joshua chapter 2, you got Rahab the harlot and the scarlet thread and Joshua sending the two spies. And you could call this Rahab from harlot to housekeeper. You're going to see Rahab turns into a virtuous woman. It says in Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. So Joshua sends out two spies. You know, back there in Numbers, they sent out ten spies and only two gave a good report. Now, Josh was just going to send out two. Most likely he sent out two that he knows is going to give a good report. And, you know, they didn't have to send in the spies. They knew that they already had the victory, but... You know, he's just going through what he needs to do, his part, doing his part. You know, we know we've got the victory in this life because of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we still got to do what we're supposed to do. We still got to fight the battle, even though we know God's fighting the battle for us and he's already defeated death out in the grave. We're, we're still going to fight the battle. So... Joshua is putting action to his faith. And you could say that the two men, those two spies, could picture the two witnesses. For one thing, they're sent out by Joshua. Joshua, a picture of the Lord Jesus. But you could say these two men picture the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11 sent out by God. And they're sent out right before the second coming. And Every battle in Joshua pictures the second coming. So you got these two spies sent out right before a battle that pictures the second coming. Uh, Jesus Christ sends men out by twos in Mark 6, 7. So I believe there's some pictures to all that here. And Rahab, notice this Rahab is still called a harlot, even though she isn't one anymore. And that's a picture of how the world will sometimes still view you from your past life. Your past life can still give you trouble. People, Some people will always see you as they used to see you. But it says... They went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now, she's lodging strangers. What does that remind you of? Well, that reminds me of 1 Timothy 5.10. In 1 Timothy 5 and verse 10, talking about a good woman, talking about a, a widow that the, that the church could take on. It says in 1 Timothy 5.10, She's well reported of for good works if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. So, one of the qualifications for a widow that the church could take on was if she have lodged strangers. And that's what she's going to do. Rahab the harlot Stepping out by faith, lodging the two spies that came in to spy out secretly. And it says in verse 2, And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. You see, the king of Jer Jericho, a lost man, he knows what's going on. You see, the this reminds me of how the lost people see you even when you think you're secret. They see what you're doing. They see what's going on. And the king of Jericho said unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. You see, 
Rahab the harlot is hiding the spies. She's no longer taking and hunting for precious life like the wicked woman does. In Proverbs 6, 26, look what it says about the strange woman, the wicked woman. Proverbs 6, 26, it says, For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. You see, Rahab used to be a harlot. Now, she's a housekeeper. Now, she's lodging strangers, not for the purpose of her old job, but for the purpose of doing something for the Lord. So, she's no longer hunting for the precious life in the sense she's trying to be an adulteress. So it says in Joshua 2, 4, And the woman took the two men, and hid them, and said thus, There came men with me, but I wish not whence they were. Now, she's telling a lie here. And she's actually commended for her lying. And that doesn't give us a right to, to think what we should always lie. You know, exceptions don't overthrow the rule. But let's look at some cases where Telling a lie was actually the right thing to do. Exodus 1, 15 through 20. It says, And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shipra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. You see, they told a lot of Pharaoh. They didn't want to kill the children. So they told a lie, you see, to save them. You know, telling a lie in a case like that to save someone's life, that's an exception. And that's what it was here for Rahab the harlot. And she's actually commended for it. In James 2 and verse 25, it says, Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? You see? She's commended for it. Hebrews 11, 31. Hebrews 11 31 it says by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace two times there she's commended for what she did and I, I remember a long time ago an atheist asked me she's like since since it's a sin to lie what if what if um Men come to my door looking for my kids, wanting to kill them. And should I just go and tell them where my, where my kids are? Or should I not lie and say that they're... Should I not lie and say that, you know, they're, they're not here? Well, obviously, you shouldn't go and show them where your kids are. And I, was, I instantly thought of this story of Rahab the harlot. You know, telling a lie in that type of situation, it's an exception to the rule. Telling a lie to save someone's life, you see. Now, since it's an exception to the rule, you got to be careful with it. Most likely, you're not going to be met with too many situations where it's okay to lie, if any. You may go through your whole life and not be met with a situation where it's okay to to lie like it is here 
And some some of the commentators will even tell you that Rahab sinned by lying here. But I mean, she's commended for it. It's an exception to the rule. Look at Exodus 20, 16. It, sh it says, it tells you, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. But it's an exception to the rule right here. Joshua 2, 4, Joshua 2, 5. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I won't not. She says. She's saying, whether the men went, I won't not. That means she knows not. She says, pursue after them quickly. For ye shall overtake them. You see, she's still being deceitful to the men of Jericho that are coming to uh, get the two spies. She's saying, you know, pursue after them quickly. You'll, you'll get them. So Rahab is excused for lying because of two other scriptures. In Exodus 20, 13, it says, thou shalt not kill. You know, if she's just going to say, okay, yeah, they're, they're right here. Would she not be assisting in their death? And think about Genesis 12, 3. Genesis 12, 3, it says, and I will, uh, God's talking to Abraham, the father of the Jews, and he says in Genesis 12, 3, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You see, uh, Rahab is blessing the Jews, so she's going to be blessed. So Rahab is excused for lying because of at least those two scriptures. You know, you obey the government until they want you to break God's laws. Just like it says in the book of Acts 5.29, it says it's better to obey God rather than men. God didn't make a big deal out of her lying. So why are you making a big deal out of her lying? You see, war involves the art of deception. That's a part of war is the art of deception. A lot of times. You see it in the Bible. In Judges 4, 18 through 21, you got this other female character in the Bible. And she does something similar, but in an opposite manner. There's this uh, guy named Sisera, a bad guy, picturing the Antichrist, and he comes into her home, and she's being deceitful in that she's pretending that she's taking care of Sisera. It says in Judges 4.18, And Jael went out to meet Sisera, and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. You know, she's saying, you know, I, you're going to be safe here. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee and say, Is there any man here that thou shalt say no? See, he, he's wanting her to do a Rahab the harlot situation here and lie to whoever comes to the door and asks if he's there. But she's going to do the opposite. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it to the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. So you see, Jael told a lie, 
and she's later commended for it. She lied to Sisera. She um, was lying, pretending she's going to take care of him, but she kills him. And she was later commended for it. You know, a similar situation there. You see, war involves the art of deception. And Rahab was taking part on the, in this war on the side of Israel. Now look at Joshua 2.6. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. So Rahab the harlot has become a housekeeper. She's become a virtuous woman. She's hid them with the stalks of flax. Now, if you're familiar with the virtuous woman of Proverbs 31... That stalks of flax is going to remind you of Proverbs 31, 13, which says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. So she's no longer doing harlot work. Now she's working with her hands. And that's where she hides the spies. She's hiding them in the flax. Flax is planted. Plants that are used for its fiber to make to make linen and to make rope. And the stalks were placed on the roof to be dried by the sun so the fibers could be taken out and used. So that's where she's hiding the two spies is in her stalks of flax. And she lays them in order on the roof. She's doing things in order now. You know, you see a lot of Lost people that are living in sin, their life's a mess, very out of order, very unorganized. But what does Paul say? 1 Corinthians 14, 40, let all things be done decently and in order. And in that chapter, the Corinthians had things out of order. In that chapter, they had women prophesying, women doing tongues, everything else. Rahab the harlot, she's got things in order. She's doing things decently in order. She's working with her hands. She's a virtuous woman now. It says in Joshua 2, 7, And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. The fords would be a shallow place in a river or stream which you can cross over on foot. So they pursued them, pursued after them, all the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. You know, in case the spies were still there. So Rahab no longer wants to trap men like the whorish woman she used to be. You know, she used to take men with her eyelids. Now she's saving the good men. Joshua's Two eight, and before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. Before they were laid down to go to sleep, you know some uh, some people, some commentators even say that the two spies laid down with Rahab. But no, this is talking about laying down to go to sleep. If Rahab and the spies slept with each other. You wouldn't see the great testimony of Rahab that's coming up in verses 9 to 12. Look at verse 9. It says, And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. She says, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. She's got assurance. She's got assurance that the God of Israel is the true God. Just like Paul had assurance. He says in 2 Timothy 1.12, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He says, I know whom I have believed. Rahab says, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Rahab has more faith than most Christians today. 
more faith than most Christians who have grew up in the Bible Belt. She was walking alone in her faith. She's turned into a virtuous woman. And the Lord knew where to find the virtuous woman. Out of all the women of Jericho that would have been wicked and evil and turned into two spies, the Lord knew where to find the virtuous woman. You know, a virtuous woman is hard to find, but God knows where she is. In Proverbs 31, 26, it says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. In Proverbs 31, 30, Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You see, she fears. She fears the Lord. She says, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that the and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. She fears God more than the men of Jericho. So she's hiding the spies. A woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And she gets praised, that's for sure, in the New Testament. So, Joshua 2.10 it says, for, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. We have heard how that the Lord hath dried up the Red Sea for you. And you see, at this time, the Red Sea crossing was 40 years in the past. But they're still talking about it. She said, we have heard how the Lord dried up the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed, you know, the two giants, she knew they were giant killers. Rahab's more impressed with God than mighty men, you see. You know, imagine a new guy coming on the playground at school and beating up the biggest bullies on the playground. So they're, they're all freaking out. You know, they beat up si, Sihon and Og. And these weren't just your average mighty men. These were big men. In Numbers 21, 21 through 30. Numbers 21, 21 through 30. It says, And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields. Or into the vineyards, we will not drink of the waters of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we be past thy borders. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border, but Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness, and he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Arnon and unto Jabbok, even unto the children of Ammon, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong, and Israel took all all these cities and Israel dwelt in all the cities Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites and Heshbon and all the villages thereof for Heshbon was the city of Sihon the king of the Amorites who had fought against the former king of Moab and taken all his land out of his hand even unto Arnon wherefore they that came they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into Heshbon, that the city of Sihon be built and prepared. So you see, they, they took out Sihon. They took out Og. In Numbers 21, 31 through 35. And he was a giant king. Og, king of Bashan. And he's mentioned in several places. He's mentioned in... Deuteronomy 3.11, he's mentioned in Psalm 135, 6 through 11. In Psalm 135, 6 through 11, it says, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas, and all deep places. He calls it the vapors 
to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both man and of beast, who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants, who smote great nations and slew mighty kings, Sahan, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan. It's the Lord that drove them out. And Rahab's more impressed with the Lord than these mighty men, Sihon and Og. She says they were utterly destroyed. It says in verse 11, And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, and neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. See, he's not just God in heaven. He's God in earth beneath. You know, you believe that he was strong enough to save you and get you to heaven. Why don't you believe he's strong enough to fix your problems on earth while you wait to go to heaven? So they heard. They've heard all these great things about Israel. And it says in verse 12, Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. You see, she can see the signs of the times. She can see that Jericho is about to be destroyed. She can see that the wrath is about to be laid down close to home. And she wants a true token. And she says, And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. You see, the virtuous woman loves her house. In Proverbs 31, 21, Proverbs 31, 21, it says, She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. How about that? All her household are clothed with scarlet. She is a harlot turned into a housekeeper. Now Joshua 2.14 And the men answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. That's what the two spies said to her. Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. So she couldn't say anything. She would need tongue control. You know, she can't be like those women that Paul was talking about. Working not at all, but, but our busybodies, tattlers. And it says, And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. They're going to spare Rahab when they come in to destroy Jericho. It says in verse 15, Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelled upon the wall. So they couldn't go through the gates. They, they went down the town wall. The wall that's that was around Jericho, she lit. She, her house was in the wall, so it was super thick. And she let them down by a cord. Cords are for binding. And the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ binds you to God. It says in verse 16, And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned. And afterward, you may go your way. So she's saying, get to the mountain. Kind of reminds you of what the Jews will be doing in the tribulation. Flee into the mountains. And it says, and the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father, and thy mother, and thy brethren, and all thy father's household home unto thee. There's that scarlet, just like the virtuous woman. Proverbs 31, 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. So it says, Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, picturing the blood of Jesus Christ. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and thy father's household home unto thee. 
you know, they told the Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Of course, she wants to get her whole household in. Acts 16, 31. You know, the thread is for mending, for mending things. And the blood fixed you up. The blood of Jesus Christ fixes you up. And these people would have had to come into Rahab's house of their own free will. Rahab's house is acting like Noah's Ark. It's acting like the body of Christ does for us. You get in Rahab's house here, you're safe because of that scarlet thread. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. So you see, Rahab's house was the safe place. It was there Noah's ark. And if thou utter this our business, then, the, then we will be quit of thine oath. Meaning they won't be bound to it anymore. They will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. She's saying, amen to the words. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. And that's where you get the, the saying they use today, the red light district. So she put the scarlet line in the window. A line is put out to hold something. And God runs the line to you with the blood of Jesus Christ. You're kept by the power of God. You're kept by the blood of Jesus. And they went and came into the mountain and abode there three days. And the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all the things that befell them. Told him all about Rahab the harlot. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. And this will be exactly how they will faint at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be... The, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, and the mighty men, every bondman, every free man are going to hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Fear is going to spread all over the land. But them two spies, they picture the two witnesses that are sent out right before the second coming. You could say, you could say Rahab is delivered like the heathen in the tribulation who call on the Lord at the advent. And she marries an Israelite. The thing about Rahab the harlot is she marries an Israelite. In Matthew 1, 5, it says, And Salmon begat Booz of Rahab, which is Rahab, and Booz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king. So you see, Rahab, check this out, Rahab is in the line of Jesus Christ, and Rahab is the great, great grandmother of King David. She married into Israel. She married Salmon. She had Boaz, which eventually marries Ruth. And Boaz and Ruth have a son named Obed. And Obed has a son named Jesse. And then Jesse has a son named David. So you see how God used Rahab this harlot turned into housekeeper this harlot turned into a housewife you know you may have a rough past as a woman but you can be like Rahab and turn into a virtuous woman